Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,251. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,251 to 1,253 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in last video, Excel Magic Trick 1249, we actually built this Excel table feature to store raw data for invoicing. In this video, we saw how to set up the database and create VLOOKUP and MATCH formulas to get invoice detail. All we want to do in this video is notice that now in this invoice number column, we have duplicates. So here we have 100, 89. And we would like to get a total for each one of the invoice numbers from our balance column. Now we're actually going to do it on this separate sheet over here called SUM IFS. But before we go over there, we want to look at the table name. So we'll go up to Table Tools Design. And up here, it's the same name we had last video, PO Transaction Table. So we're going to need that table name in the formula, and we're going to need the column or field name, invoice number, and balance. So let's go over and see how to use sum ifs and table formula nomenclature or structured references to create a total for each one of these invoices. We use sum ifs. Now, I only have one condition here for adding, so I could use sum if, but I always use sum ifs because that can do one or more conditions for adding. And I like the screen tip names better in the sum ifs. So the sum range, well, I need to first put in the table name. So watch this when I type PO. The drop down, if I arrow down, I can see that icon for the table tab. Now I type a square bracket, and the field names show up. I can arrow down, because I'm trying to add from balance tab, then I close square bracket. That's the sum range. Now I need to come to the end, comma, PO down arrow tab, square bracket. And the criteria range is going to be invoice number, tab, square bracket. Now I have the criteria range. That's the range I'm looking through, comma, to match in the criteria one the invoice number, which is a relative SAR reference, one to my left. Now I close parentheses and check this out. We talked about table names and a field name in square brackets last video, but we only saw when we copied it to the side what happens. And what happens is that's a relative column rep. So balance because it's the last column would move to date, and invoice number would move to model number. But here in this example, we're copying it down a column. That means that the balance field is locked. So when you have table formula nomenclature, also known as structure references, table name, field name, copy it to the side, it moves relative. Copy down, it is locked or absolute. So when I Control Enter and double click and send it down, F2, you can see sure enough, boom, there it's locked on balance invoice number. And the A8, of course, is looking at relative cell reference one to my left, the invoice number. Now, actually, we could remind ourselves last video when we copied table name and field name to the side, sure enough, because balance was the last column, it goes back to the first column. And of course, invoice number changed to model number. We don't need that. All right, so if you're trying to use sum ifs to add from an Excel table feature, it's easy enough to use the sum ifs function, table, field names in square bracket, and a relative cell reference to add with one condition. All right, next video, we'll actually see the same example again, but we'll use Power Query to generate a unique list of invoice numbers and to add the total for each invoice. All right, we'll see you next video.